Ciao, a tutti. Today we are going to discuss the rhetoric of the image by Roland Barthes, which made me occupied for the past month. <laughs> Kidding aside, me and Michi. His analysis and critic on the Penzani advertisement made a significant role in the semiotic world, especially in linguistics and advertisements. This video is only a briefer explanation of the essay in order to understand it better. Hopefully, Il Grupo Faccio Molo Finita could explain this nicely. Now. Shall we begin? Bart started to scheme off by identifying three kinds of messages that are present in the image of the ad. The Panzan advertisement image includes some packets of pasta, a tin asache, some tomatoes, onions, peppers, a mushroom, all emerging from a half open string bag in yellow and greens and a red background. The image in the advertisement consists of multiple signs that can be interpreted in different ways. It was mentioned in the essay that the signified implies two euphoric values, the product's freshness and the domestic preparation for which the objects are destined. Upon looking at the image of the advertisement, the formation and the ingredients used shows the idea of being at home, which could have been one of the idea of the advertiser since consumers would love to eat a homemade pasta made of love and the comfort of home. The ingredients shown like the tomatoes seem fresh like the ones freshly bought from the market and ready to be prepared for a meal. Well, homemade meals, especially when prepared by the mother, always tastes better than purchased meals. This is the first sign explained in the essay. Another sign mentioned in the essay is the manipulation of colors by using tricolored hues and the use of tomato and pepper which is signified as Italy or Italianity. Well, upon looking at the poster, its color is the same as the Italian flag. This style creates stereotypes, especially to non-natives, that the product is made in Italy and it is delicious knowing Italians are known for cooking pasta dishes. The other sign is for art appreciators who can identify a type of painting at first glance and the wholeness of the advertisement gave a Natura Mot vibe or a still life vibe and that is heavily cultural too since Italy and French history played a big role in the Renaissance period. Still life paintings include inanimate objects like rocks, books, faces, etc. And the advertisement poster just displayed plenty of inanimate objects. The consumable ingredients in the poster show the ephemerality of the pleasures it may give to a human once consumed. Finally, some good fucking food. In addition to the signs, it can also be shown in the poster that it speaks another meaning despite having a catchphrase or a tagline. Interpreting its preparation, one can say that there will be a delicious meal later or someone is going to prepare a pasta or it could mean anything. The limit does not exist! The advertisement speaks for itself, even though it does not even talk. The four signs are enough to tell the culturally aware audience that pasta will be prepared just by seeing the objects even without the signage. No. <laughs> it also formed an identity that after cooking, the mixture of those edible objects will turn into a delicious meal even though the process of cooking or preparing it was not shown. The following discussions about the three messages will be further be explained how the image is supposed to be interpreted. And winter is coming! The first thing that Bart's noticed in the Panzani ad which makes his analysis interesting and inspiration to other advertisements analysis is the linguistic message. What's that supposed to mean? He proved that images are widespread through mass communication as a venue in explaining and promoting what a certain image for. Since images are polysimous, Bart's believe that it can be interpreted easily by choosing the image in advertising because of its intentional signification. As mass communication showed the world, the image became an idea with the use of linguistic message which provides details for images that are vague that tend to complicate its meaning.
don't say that. By the use of title, caption, dialogue, and any kind of text, the purpose of image comments. In the Panzani ad, it was obviously viewed that the first takeaway from the image is a linguistic message or in the brand name Panzani gives the idea of the product's name a signification of Italian history. Okay. However, the linguistic message can only impart the real and clear meaning of an image with the help of connotation that draws the relationship of image and language together. This linguistic message found in image can be identified as anchorage or relay. But for advertising, the anchorage is used for it serves as the indicator of meanings that set boundaries to complexity of thoughts because of the text given for an image that orients the minds of viewers before giving their own interpretation of image. Like the Panzani brand name intended to show the consumer that the product is an Italian name but its paradigmaticity is it can be available not only in Italy and not only for Italian. The best spaghetti in a town. The next message in advertisement according to Bartz is the denoted image. This is basically the message without a code. This means that what is seen is meant to be that way. No other meaning other than it's literal. You see this cup? This is literally my favorite cup. But Bartz believes that in advertisement, the images used cannot be in pure literal state. There's always a hidden message or a connoted meaning. Bartz has two observations about the denoted image. The first observation Bartz makes is that the literal message exists as a message by eviction. It is constituted by what is left in the image when one imagines deleting the connotations in the image. And the second observation he makes is from an aesthetic point of view. The denoted can appear as a kind of idyllic state of the image, which means no connotations used which the image would appear as radically objective and innocent, which seems to be a message without a code. Bartz believed that there is no literal image or purely denoted message when it comes to advertising. Therefore, images in advertising has always a connoted meaning. Always. Let us now talk about the photograph and drawing. The relationship between signifiers and signified in photographs can be explained by comparing the two. In drawing, the coded nature of it has three levels. First, it always requires a set of rules to make a scene or an object, and always have a connotative coding. This is what Bartz believes in that in every image, there is always a connoted meaning. This is also true to the nature of drawing, for instance in comics. There are small details on the drawing where a message hides in and needs to decipher to understand what it conveys. Second, it always makes a distinction between significant and insignificant. The drawing reproduces very minimal thing it wants to represent or put emphasis on. Or in simple words, the annotation of the drawing is less pure than on the photograph. And lastly, drawing always demands apprenticeship. The literal or the denoted image always work or facilitates its connotation. This means that the connoted message can never be separated. On the other hand, the level of relationship of signifier and signified in drawing is transformation. But in photograph, it is recording. With the absence of code, it reinforces the naturalness in photography. The intervention of human in the photograph, with the use of various techniques in photography, are all under the connotative message. This form signification of the photograph creates a new space-time category, the spatial immediacy and the temporal anteriority. The photograph in spatial immediacy shows the reality of the present and is never an illusion, while the temporal anteriority is the photograph of the past taken from different place and of different time. However, Bartz still denies this idea as the denoted image does not imply any codes, which according to him is not possible in advertisement to be purely literal. To sum it up, 
the denoted image plays an important role in the structure of symbolic message. This is used as an accessory in naturalizing the connoted elements, making them innocent and to make an advertisement appear purely literal. We are now down to Bart's essay's final part, the rhetoric of the image. We owe the concept of rhetoric of the image to Roland Barthes as it is defined as the technique of persuasion via the use of means of speech. It is based on two theoretical distinctions, connotation and denotation, and the internal sign relations between the signifier and the signified. Everything is distinguished by the presence of at least two levels of language, the proper or denoted and the figurative or connoted. Studying images necessitates passing through semiology. He did this to his most notable and famous 1964 study of Panzani advertising. Barthes uses the example of a pasta bread introduced all the way from Italy to France in his essay. Although it is aimed at the French audience, the commercial is in Italian. According to Barthes, the fact that the viewer does not understand what is being said does not prevent the viewer from connecting Italian with high-quality pasta. The visual and audio levels are two more concepts Barthes used. The commercial's visual level is basically everything we see while viewing it, while the audio level is everything we hear while watching it, obviously. The commercial's effect is created by the interaction of the auditory and visual levels. The audio level anchors the visual level, directing our attention to where we should look and what we should pay attention to. Barthes argues that natural reality is not really intrinsically encoded or encrypted but instead that its replication is a visual image that codes and imposes its cultural meaning on it. Visual mediums are mistakenly thought to depict reality, while in fact they are constructing it. It was followed by the discussion about the lexicon, a corpus of knowledge used to derive meaning within the viewer. Multiple lexicons are stimulated by a single lecture, which may or may not be shared by viewers. This resulted in the author, consumer, and the junction of lexicons with the signs in the image generating meaning. Barthes refers to a person's ideolect as collection of the lexicon. Mental language is the language in which linguistic forms, the meaning of expressions and sentences, language use, the admissibility of formations, and the truth of claims are addressed. Object language is the term for the language you're referring to. Object language and a metal language are thus combined in a declaration concerning another surgeon's form, correctness, or validity. The lack of specialized analytical language that could match the distinctiveness of its signifies was one of the challenges Barthes had in analyzing connotation. Just me and someone insatiable. Connotation signifiers that are specific to the chosen material match the general ideology. These signifiers are connotators, while the collection of connotators will be referred to as rhetoric, with rhetoric serving as the signifying part of an ideology. Also, rhetorics are always differentiated by their content, here, vocal sound, there, picture, gesture, etc., but not always by their form. The shared domain of the signified is what is referred to as ideology which cannot exist in an isolation in a single culture and history, regardless of the connotative signifiers employed. Also, the corresponding connotation signifiers are specified according to the selected material as a whole ideology. Metabolus is founded on replacing one term for another, as in metaphor and metonymy for example. Any word has deep cultural connotations. When one word is substituted for another, the term introduces a slew of new ideas and meanings, inviting the listener to partially replace the original word's intention with these new concepts. In actuality, when a person hears a substitution, they may be first perplexed and actively seek new meaning to maintain what is stated within the confines of comprehension. Thus, Barthes referred to the connotators as rhetoric, as previously stated. Visual objects or elements present in an image may also be identified as signifiers, which is referred to as the rhetoric of the image. And finally, whew, 
The syntagm is the disorderliness of the elements of a specific image in an advertisement according to Roland Barthes. It generates the denotative meanings of a picture for him, whereas the paradigm is the image's connotation. In similar terms, Barthes described the paradigmatic and syntagmatic aspects of the garment system. The paradigmatic elements cannot be worn on the same portion of the body simultaneously, while the syntagmatic dimension is the simultaneous juxtaposition of several pieces in a complete ensemble. To sum everything up, this essay talks about how Roland Barthes argues that natural reality is not fundamentally encoded in the image. It is the reproduction of the visual image that coded and enforced a cultural meaning upon the advertisement. The visual mediums, like the Panzani ad, are perceived as portraying what is on the reality, while the truth is that the images are constructing what reality is. Hi! So much for this essay. Arrivederci!